The Klingon D-7 class battlecruiser was the pinnacle of combat warships in the 23rd century. The mainstay of the Imperial Klingon fleet, the D-7 inspired fear throughout the quadrant. At 228 meters long and a crew of around 430, it was not the largest ship of the time, however this versatile vessel could take on many roles. In addition to being a combat ship, it was quick and maneuverable. With its S2 Graf unit propulsion system, Sim similar to the Federation Starfleet's warp drive. On several encounters with the USS Enterprise in the 2260s, the D-7 was used as a scout ship, able to slip in and out of the Enterprise's sensor range with ease. The D-7 was heavily armed, featuring phasers, photon torpedoes, and two nacelle-mounted disruptor cannons. The cannons could fire extremely powerful disruptor bolts, utilizing power directly from the ship's engines. Their placement on the outer wings gave them great range and a wide field of fire. In concert with the forward photon torpedo launcher, the ship could produce a devastating frontal assault on its targets. A disturbing event for the Federation happened in 2268 when it was discovered that the Klingon Empire and the Romulan Star Empire had made an alliance. A few exchanges, including the Romulans adding the far superior D-7 to their fleet and the Klingons receiving the Romulan cloaking technology, rendering ships invisible to the eyes and sensors. It increased the Federation's anxiety. The Federation concocted a secret plan to capture one of the Romulan cloaking devices, now installed on the Romulan D-7 cruisers, brandishing the glorious Romulan bird of prey art. The Enterprise was once again sent into danger to acquire one of these precious devices. After Captain Kirk's plan had succeeded, the Enterprise warped as fast as it could back to the neutral zone as the Romulans gave chase. Just entering weapons range of the powerful disruptor cannons, the Enterprise suddenly disappeared. Chief Engineer Officer Montgomery Scott had been able to integrate the cloaking device into the systems of the Enterprise to activate it just in time. The D-7 would eventually be refit into the venerable Katinga class. The Katinga would continue on well into the next century, even taking part in the Dominion War. The legacy of the D-7 would inspire many Klingon ship designs in the years to come, most all featuring a low neck with the command center at the end, wings with disruptor cannons, and a generally sleek, aggressive look. The D-7 was designed by art director Matt Jeffries, designer of the original USS Enterprise. At the time, he had to design a ship that would be instantly recognizable as an enemy ship, especially for a flash cut. There had to be no way it could be mistaken for the other guys, or our guys. It had to look threatening, even vicious. The studio filming miniature was built by AMT, who would later produce a model kit. AMT also built the shuttlecraft Galileo, and had produced a model kit for that as well. Good afternoon once again, fellow Star Trek fans. I hope you're doing well, and I'd like to welcome you to another video. I got another little interesting Star Trek nugget to share with you from the original series, um, continuing the theme of the Johnny Lightning. I show you right now the Johnny Lightning Legends of Star Trek Klingon D7 Battlecruiser. You can see this one um, comes with torpedoes and explosions. So that's kind of interesting. Now I had gotten this off eBay and what I noticed when I got it in the mail was that a lot of the pieces had broken off. I don't know if the torpedoes, I don't know if you can see it in here. Let me show it, I'll turn it around for you. You see the little line? It's like uh, greenish. Well, that's the torpedo firing. 
and I don't know if it came from the factory like that where you could just add it on if you want to or if it actually broke off during shipment um, I noticed that some of the pieces broke off during during shipment the um, starboard nacelle where is it you know, it's on the bottom here somewhere I'll turn it around I had noticed that that had come off um, you can see it, it's it's right up against the stand. You can see it in there. Um, I don't know if it's battle damaged, if it came off, and you can put it back on. Um, I'm not going to open it, because I want to keep everything together, and it's a lot easier to, um, to store it when it's still in the packaging, plus um, it'll be still... Not in mint condition because it's a part, but it'll still be in the packaging, so it'll be um, better, I think. But you can see that on the bottom. It says explosions. There's a mark on the wing, on the starboard side. You can see it looks like it would be battle damage. And the explosion could be that little yellow kind of blob. I haven't seen, I, look, I tried looking for some videos on this particular one on YouTube, and I couldn't find any. Um, not about this particular model anyway. They do have the Legends of Star Trek, the D7s, but it was different. Um, I went to johnnylightning.com, and I wasn't able to find this one. I don't know if it's because it's, you know, they move on, it's discontinued, or what the deal is, but... Um, I wanted to see if it came together, you know, if it, if it was all together or if you had the option of uh, putting on the firing torpedoes and maybe the explosions on the wing and the other nacelle. But this is what it is. Let me show you a little bit of information on it. Again, this is um, the, the Johnny Lightning, Legends of Star Trek. And I guess they have different series. This is still Series 5. And it's the Sacrifice theme. Um, I don't know a lot about Johnny Lightning. I've got only a couple of things that I recently got. I had showed you the Shuttlecraft Galileo 2. Um, and I still have to show you the Enterprise. Um, the destruction of the Enterprise. So I got that one to show you. So I don't have a lot of Johnny Lightning things. I do know that Johnny Lightning is also an offshoot of uh, Polar Light's models. So this is a Klingon D7 battle cruiser. And this one is number two. And it's 53694D. Klingon D7 battle cruiser. You can see it's got that Klingon markings on the wing. And I hope the pictures and the video come out well because I know it's pretty small. It's about the size of a matchbox car. So um, I don't see a scale on here. If I do find a scale, I'll put it up for you. But I want to show you the detail as much as I can. Um, I do love the D7. The D7 is one of my favorite ships. Matter of fact, I had showed you um, not that long ago, I had done um, a video showing you the AMT D7, where it was still the alien battle cruiser. And let me see if I got this. I had recently gotten this one. This is the D7. This is in the, uh, the collector's tin. You can see the, the nice picture on the back. And the other goodies that I've shown you when it comes to the D7, let me show you. I've shown you the dinky toys, the cast iron toys, the D7. It shoots the little discs. So I got a couple of things with the D7. Um, the official studio model 
I'm going to try to put some of the pictures up. If I can find them, I'll put them up in this video because I wanted to give you a little bit of history on the D7 Klingon battle cruiser, the ship itself. The Star Trek, the original series, the first time we see the D7. Later on in Star Trek Enterprise, as you recall, we also, when the Federation has first contact with the Klingons, it's kind of a D7 battle cruiser. But this one is from Johnny Lightning. It's the Legends of Star Trek. You can see the website on the bottom. I'll show you the back of the container. Because it's a series, and this is the Sacrifice um, series, part five, it does the same information on the back. So a lot of the packaging is pretty much the same, with the exception of the ship. Um, you got the quotes from Star Trek III, The Search for Spock. You got the information about Mr. Spock and the sacrifice that his friends and crewmates have done. And you've got the stand that's kind of like the Diamond Select ball and socket. It's got the similar, um, similar kind of shape, the triangular shape. Again, you can see this was released in, I believe, 2008. Is that 2008? Yep, 2008. You can see Paramount Pictures and the Star Trek Fan Club. And again, you can see the torpedoes. That's pretty cool. It's a good idea. I just wish I could uh, show you guys all of it together. And I'm curious about the, the explosion. Like I said, when I do the editing and I make the video, I'm going to look for pictures of what it would look like all together. So hopefully I can show you guys um, the explosions on the battle damage and the torpedoes coming out of the front of the ship. You see it's got some nice details. Let me try to zoom in on it for you. I'm going to put up pictures. You see that looks pretty uh, pretty cool. Yeah, I do. I love the D7. It's, it's just such a cool ship. The Romulan ships are, are pretty cool, um, but I like the, the Klingons better, the Klingon ships. And as, as some of you may or may not know, in the original series, um, the Romulans actually had switched over to the D7, and they were using the style of the D7 as their own. So you could see the Klingon ship, and it had the Romulan bird of prey markings on it. You guys remember from the Enterprise incident? That was when Captain Kirk was acting erratically. He orders the ship through the neutral zone. They end up getting caught. Um, they were surrounded by the Romulans, and they were using Klingon D7 type model um, ships. And that's when it was later discovered that Captain Kirk was working under orders. They ended up, the Federation had wanted the cloaking device, and they did get one. So I love it when the Romulans are pursuing the Enterprise and they engage the cloaking device and the Enterprise just disappears. That was one of my favorite scenes. So my friends, this is the Johnny Lightning Legends of Star Trek Klingon D7 Battlecruiser. If you were curious about this particular one, I hope this satisfied your curiosity. And I'll be making another video very soon. Thank you for watching, and live long and prosper.